Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Uh, this is going to be my first online class of this sort, recording live while I'm just sitting here talking to myself. So do bear with me, this is a new experience for me. I'm going to be working out the glitches as I go along. Um, any kind of feedback that you have for me on this class or any of my future classes, uh, please feel free to give to me. I'm always looking for ways to improve on uh, both my educational endeavors um, and myself as a person. So you can email me at Stesha Warren at gmail.com, find me on Facebook, or just simply respond here on YouTube. Okay, well we're going to get started. Um, I am a representative for doTERRA, an independent product consultant, aka wellness advocate. Uh, this is me and my happy little family, minus one. We are actually brewing another baby right now. I'm about six months pregnant. Starting to get nice and fat, and loving every minute of it. Um, let me begin by giving you a real quick um, of how I came into essential oils and what my I like to call my oily testimony. Um, I what have been raised in a very natural manner to begin with and has been exposed to essential oils from a very young age for cleaning purposes, basic ailments such as bug bites and whatnot. It wasn't until last year that I really started exploring and realizing the potential of the full medicinal value of essential oils. Um, early last year my mother was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of breast cancer and therefore had to start doing a very aggressive therapy to treat it. Um, during this time I witnessed her very successfully use essential oils to combat the effects of both radiation, chemo, and the cancer itself. Um, the doctors were very amazed at how well that she did. Uh, I was amazed everybody in our family was, and I think she was as well. Um, that was kind of the beginning of the therapeutic witness to me. Um, I also have been battling with very bad back problems for an extended period of time. I blew out my back some years back. Um, uh, harvesting potatoes actually. I'm a little girl but I, I do try to do men's work for the most part. I'm used to anyway. Um, I blew out my back um, and I have two ruptured discs in my back. One of them is totally degenerated meaning I have no disc left there. It's essentially vertebra on vertebra. Um, needless to say this has caused me a lot of pain over the years, a lot of sciatica issues. There's been periods of time where I haven't been able to walk. I've had to do a series of cortisone shots. None of them lasted very long and many of them actually ended up leaving me in worse shape after the first series um, and having to go back in and get residual ones. And again, none of them lasted very long. I was on um, a pain reliever called hydrocodone and a muscle relaxer called scalaxin for many years as well. Um, not to the point of being addicted or anything like that, but it was something that I had to turn to more regularly than I was comfortable with uh, to, just to be able to function. Um, last year I ran out of both of my medications and was waiting for my script to be refilled and was offered some essential oils to put on my back to try to relieve some of the discomfort and was absolutely amazed at the relief that I got from it. Um, I ended up not having to fill that script. At the time I was scheduled for another cortisone treatment and was able to cancel that. Um, at the period of time I was using it very, very regularly. If anybody is, is, is curious as to which oils I was using, I'd be glad to share that with you. Uh, feel free to contact me or I can do a class on just that as well. Um, but I was absolutely amazed at how well these oils worked on my back, relieved my discomfort, reduced the inflammation. It by no means fixed my discs, um, but it did leave me in a situation where I could function without the aid of medication um, or these horrible cortisone shots that I was having to get. Um, I have since started really getting into the uh, a variety of other aspects of it. I make most of our body care products. I make uh, just about all of our baby care products. I make all of my cleaning supplies with the exception of my uh, laundry detergent which I have a local supplier here. Um, it's really great all natural stuff called Charlie Soap. Can't recommend it enough. Um, anyway, so there's a lot of different aspects, uh, ways that you can use these essential oils and that I've been able to integrate them into my home and really eager to share that with you. Um, in addition to all of these products that I've learned how to make, um, and their various applications, but it has also replaced most of the medicine in our medicine cabinet. This is actually the first year since I was about eight or nine years old where I haven't had to take Benadryl for my seasonal allergies. My essential oils have been covering um, pretty much all of, all of my everyday needs as far as headaches, allergies, antibiotic ointment, those types of things. Um, a lot of that I'm getting ready to share with you here. Um, this is a very much an introductory class. Uh, we're going to be going over a lot of the basic 
oils, some of which are in, in included in our family physician kit. Um, I'll go over all that at the very end of this class. Um, feel free to pop me with any questions. Um, if you want additional resources, I'm always happy, happy to share with people. Don't hesitate to contact me. Um, real quick, before we get started though, I do have to say I am not a medical doctor. I am a wellness advocate, I am a mother, I am a wife, I have a Bachelor of Science degree in agricultural education, not in medicine. Everything that I know is from independent research, I'm glad to share that with you, but this stuff has not been evaluated by the FDA. I am not trying to treat, diagnose, or cure any disease. I encourage you to take responsibility for your own health, educate yourself, educate others. This is how change happens. So, okay, real quick, um, this is a great opportunity to go ahead and grab a pen, paper, press pause. Uh, I will be trying to move relatively quickly through this so I don't bore you to death. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can find us on our Facebook group board called Essential Wellness. Send us a request or pop me an email. I'll be glad to add you to it. Um, this is where we share uh, medical research that we find online, um, testimonies, recipes uh, for products, and, and a variety of other things. Um, if this was a live class, I would also have a question and answer period at the end of class, um, but this one's not going to have that. So anyway, ready, set, go. Boop. So we are going to be talking about, um, real quick, I want you to take a moment and think about what is health care costing your family. This is a very important question and probably is a lot more in depth than you initially realize because we have all been trained to just go about um, providing for our health care in a certain manner that is really uh, proven to be not incredibly effective. Um, um, so in as we are going to talk about this a little bit more in depth, um, take into consideration, be thinking about whether or not you want safer, cheaper, and more effective health care as we go through and ask some of these questions. Um, family health care costs, as you're thinking about this, it's not just costs associated with money, although money is a big issue with it. You've got premiums, you've got co-pays, you've got prescriptions, you've got um, deductibles. It's, 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 if you really sit down and add up what you're spending in a year individually and for a family, say of four like ours, then you're running into very significant health costs, many of which can be avoided and um, and really unnecessary. Time, uh, you, it's costing you very precious time, office visits, insurance forms, sick time away from work and school and away from your family. This is, time is a very valuable resource that we just don't have enough nowadays. Um, excuse me. And healthcare, um, your health. Um, the synthetic chemicals that are being prescribed to us, the harmful side effects of those, many of the synthetic chemicals, uh, and we'll go into that just a little bit more in a second as well, but many of the synthetic chemicals are really designed to treat the symptoms, not the actual illness itself. Of course, there are some exceptions to that, but the majority of them really are just designed to treat the symptoms and leave you with more side effects that usually re end up requiring more medication. Um, say for instance Benadryl. Um, I, that, like I said, this is the first year I haven't had to take Benadryl since I was eight or nine years old for my horrible seasonal allergies and hay fever. Um, but some of the side effects that typically come with us trying to relieve, um, you know, the, the itchy eyes, the stuffy nose, and the the, the, the heavy congestion that comes, comes with the seasonal allergies. Um, you end up having dry mouth and it making you sleepy, um, messing with your moods, messing with your appetite. And a lot of these side effects come with the synthetic chemical combinations of ingredients, um, stuff that we really don't need to be putting into our bodies and can have a host of other bad side effects um, when there are natural alternatives available. Um, and the choice. Many of us have stopped using our innate intuition to decide what to do when we don't feel well. Instead, we have been uh, trained to rush to the doctor immediately, get a pill prescribed to us, wait, pay for that pill, pay the doctor, come back home, take the pill, still not feel well, and then eventually end up giving, <laughs> getting over it on our own. Um, and this is a cycle that, that really is, is unnecessary, it's not effective, and there is an alternative to it. So between the, the money, time, health, and the choices making within it, um, what is going to give you peace of mind when choosing what your family's health care is? And hopefully I can help you with some of that.
Um, so uh, after this class is over, I encourage you to go and take a look into your own medicine cabinet. Um, when I first started getting into essential oils, I literally threw away between my body care products, baby products, and my medicine cabinet, which was very similar to this. Um, I threw away literally three bags, three grocery bags, not grocery bags, but three trash bags full of stuff. It must have been 40 or 50 pounds worth of stuff I threw out of my cabinet. Most of it was expired. Um, this was stuff I bought for one-time uses. It was only good for one ailment, and I didn't need it again. It didn't really work when I did use it, um, and I wasn't taking care of my health when I was trying to do this, although I thought that I was. Um, so if you take a look at this right here, essential oils can essentially replace most of the stuff on this table here. Um, I'm sure you recognize a lot of these things from the Pepto-Bismol or stomach ailments to the allergy, headache, um, bug issues, all of that. Every, we're, we're very familiar with all of these things. All of these things add up when you're purchasing them separately too. It may be three or four dollars here and there, but it's going to expire. It's going to only treat one thing and it's just going to treat the symptom, not the actual ailment itself. So think about the investment. You've probably got a few hundred dollars worth of stuff sitting here on the table, most of which have expired. With essential oils, you have stuff that is not going to expire with the exception of citrus oils. If they're, um, if everything is properly stored, keep the lid tight, keep them out of sunlight and out of super moist environments, um, the essential oils should last a really, really long time. I mean, I'm talking generations here. Um, the citrus oils will last significantly long. Um, but not as long as the rest of them, uh, just due to the method in which they, they are produced and what they are. Um, compared to all these synthetic solutions here, it's, um, essential oils really are a great long-term investment. Uh, one oil can treat an array of, of issues, say for instance, um, lavender. It can be a great sleep aid, a great relaxant. It's got antibiotic properties. Um, you can use it in soaps, body care products. It's great. It is almost instant relief for bug bites, believe it or not. That's like my go-to oil for everything just about. Um, it's really great for skin sensitivity issues. I mean, it's, it's, it's just really an, an amazing all-around oil. And most of these oils have multiple purposes to them, not just a few of them. Um, and we're going to get into some of our more common ones in just a second. <clears throat> Um, so modern medicine, we, we discussed this just a little bit a few minutes ago. Um, most modern medicine, actually just about all modern medicine, is made from isolated, isolated synthetic agents, many of which are actually um, mimic and reproduced from naturally occurring things. Aspirin, for instance, um, the, the, the main chemical constituent coming from that, the synthetic agent, is isolated coming from a chem chemical constituent coming from a willow tree bark, um, which is where you're getting your pain relief from. Um, the pharmaceutical companies go in, isolate, they cannot patent these naturally occurring forms, so they create a synthetic agent and they can reproduce patent and it only treat one little symptom of what the entire um, original chemical constituent could carry. Um, the side effects, uh, many of them are known and unknown. Some of these, the products that are on the market, really don't have enough research associated with them. There's constantly being recalls, there's constantly being um, people being suing pharmaceutical companies. You have side effects that are uh, uncalled for and unexpected from everything from uh, liver failure with uh, Tylenol that we've recently found out about, ADHD with, with Tylenol with pregnant women. I mean, we thought that that was one of the few medications we could take and be safe while we're pregnant. Uh, come to find out that is not the case. Um, <clears throat> And then you've got stuff a little bit more serious, you know, the, these antidepressant medications, many of which are causing people to, to, to commit suicide. And, to, and I mean, just lives are being ruined from this stuff. And it's um, many of it, like I said, just the side effects, many are known and unknown. And putting something into your body that is not naturally designed to be used that way is just really, it can have some scary consequences. Um, again, the, these medications are designed to manage symptoms. They're not designed to manage the root cause of a disease or to 
help realign your body to be able to combat it naturally. Uh, another thing to can take into consideration with modern medicine is that it's a four and a half trillion, trillion, that, that, that's a lot of zeros there, really think about that, um, years, uh, money that's spent on global health care and that's coming out of your pocket, your neighbor's pocket, your mother's pocket, your daughter's pocket. Um, and the, the pharmaceutical companies really want that money to continue coming in regardless of the consequences. This is not a people business, this is a money business. Um, and when it gets down to it, are we really healthier because of it? Um, again, ask yourself that. Um, so we're going to start talking about doTERRA a little bit here and what essential oils are. This is a, uh, a natural health care alterna uh, alternative. Uh, we offer um, pure certified therapeutic grade essential oils. Um, again, this is a natural health um, care alternative. Uh, they're a wonderful complement to your current healthy lifestyle. Um, we encourage people not to just use our oils for a variety of purposes, but encourage a healthy lifestyle all the way around, which inc includes eating right, exercising, getting restful sleep, and being happy and finding that happiness in your life because that really contributes to a natural, healthy lifestyle more than just about anything. Um, I also love that essential oils in these little bottles here, like I said, they last practically forever. Um, but they hold roughly a 15 milliliter bottle holds roughly 250 drops of oil. Um, for those of you who have sat in on my 101 classes, which I, I will be recording soon, hopefully within the next few days to a week, um, a little 15 milliliter bottle holds roughly 250 drops. Um, a normal adult application usually is between two to five drops, depending upon what you're doing. That means that you can get as many as 125 quote unquote doses in a small bottle um, that is not going to expire and that you can use for a variety of things. So this is a much better value than the over the counter medications, even outside of the rest of the stuff that we've talked about. Um, and as we continue, I'm thinking you'll just, you'll discover and learn why it is such a cost-effective and powerful natural health tool um, that I'm trying to share with you right now. <clears throat> so real quick, again, for those who have not taken, I'm not going to bore you too long with this, um, but for those of you who have not taken my one-on-one -on -one classes or are not familiar with essential oils, um, I'll just real quickly, what is an essential oil? Um, it is the natural aromatic compounds that are found in plants. These are usually steam distilled. Um, some of them, like citrus oils, are cold pressed from the rinds, but most of them are steam distilled. This picture right here, to the left, you've got a peppermint essential oil. I'm mean, sorry, a peppermint leaf. To the right of it is a uh, close up of the oil sacs on the peppermint leaf. Um, these little oil sacs are the aromatic compounds that I'm refer referring to, which are actually extracted. So, with, when you were making peppermint essential oil, they harvest thousands and thousands of pounds of leaves. They compress them into a vat um, and run steam through them through the plant material. The water and vapors move through a piping system, and at the end of the distillery process, you get two things coming out of it. You get the floral water, which is great for perfuming, um, sometimes great for cooking, has a variety of uses, uh, has its own therapeutic value to it. But the essential oil is what is um, used more for health use and what we're after here. Um, the essential oils are essentially <laughs> uh, the live essence of the plant. Unlike herbs, oops, go back. <laughs> Unlike herbs, um, which are dried, um, and a lot of the chemical constituents are actually killed in it um, or just lost from evaporation. Um, the essential oils carry all of the active chemical constituents that the plant itself carries. Um, this is why they are so therapeutically powerful. Uh, think about what a plant has to do in, in, in nature in order to survive. Um, a lot of those uh, elements of being able to fight off disease, elements of um, contamination by other in insects and more. A lot of these characteristics are available to us uh, in the live plant extractions. Um, furthermore, each chemical, a drop of chemical constituent, I'm sorry, each drop of essential oil has hundreds of chemical constituents. Some of them we understand, some of them we don't, um, but we do know that when they are isolated and separated from each other, they work differently. Um, you get the most benefit when they are all together and they can work off of each other in a symbiotic relationship as um, they were naturally created to do. Um, some of these chemical constituents um, can actually be as strong as crossing the brain, um, the brain blood barrier. Um, frankincense, myrrh, sandalwood, cedarwood. Some of those ones have high chemical constituents called um, 
Yes, I can't even pronounce this right. It says gastroperitis. <laughs> um, I always butcher that word. It's way too long for my um, for my lack of scientific mind here. Um, anyway, but it's one of the few a few things known in man to cross the blood brain barrier, and this is um, huge and significant when it comes to dealing with. Um, with um, neurological issues, uh, and we'll get into that in, in another class. But but they're incredibly powerful. They're incredibly safe and used properly. Uh, they're very easy to use um, and incredibly beneficial. Um, I just cannot talk anymore about how much I love essential oils. <laughs> Um, the brief history, real quickly again for those who haven't taken my 101 class, brief history of essential oils. They've been used for thousands and thousands of years. Egypt, China, Greece, India, Mesopotamia. Um, they were uh, mentioned in the Bible many, many times. Uh, 39 books, I do believe, in the Old Testament. Um, it is the oldest form of medicine. Uh, I go into this more, more in depth in a different class. They were rediscovered in the early 1900s in France where lavender was plentiful. Doctors began treating a number of conditions, burns, muscles, pains, etc. using essential oil. Um, the leading, uh, France is actually the leading user of essential oils where they're often prescribed in hospitals for healing. It is considered real medicine there, unlike in the U.S., unfortunately. Um, you'll also find essential oils uh, widely used in Germany, England, France, as well as Australia, India, and Asia. Um, in the U.S., we are just more recently beginning to discover the power of it. Uh, it's not yet become a regulated medicine. Um, hopefully, the FDA will um, make good steps. They are not bad ones, and they can go either way, depending upon how they choose to do that. Um, much of the movement that is in the U.S. right now started in the 60s um, with the practice of uh, meditation, um, so-called essential oils you find in shampoos, room sprays, and whatnot. Um, but they're not really used for the therapeutic value that we're talking about with doTERRA essential oils. Um, you have to be very careful when selecting your oils. And we'll, uh, briefly discuss that towards the end of this as well. I encourage you all to, to watch my one-on-one -on -one class when I have that available. Um, it, it will give you a really good foundation and, and the history, the mechanisms, um, and safety issues, carrier oils, all of those types of things. I encourage you to do that. Um, again, we talked about uh, one essential oil being able to be have a uh, array of possible uses for it. Um, this would be one example right here. Uh, the, 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 with a uh, lavender essential oil. Again, they've been used for thousands of years. Um, there's tons of different properties available to each one. Um, so if one, your body does not react favorably to one, some people have a, a mild sensitivity or they just don't like the smell or something like that, um, then chances are there's another oil that will work just as well for you for that um, that specific issue. Uh, this isn't an exact science. Uh, a lot of it is just kind of um, starting out at a baseline and adjusting accordingly depending upon your unique body or whoever it is that you're working with. Um, there is a lot of scientific research that is going into essential oils right now. They are having new discoveries literally every week. If you watch PubMed um, or ju just watch the internet for, for new studies and scientific research that's coming out, um, it is absolutely amazing some of the stuff that they're, that, that they're discovering right now. It's being linked to breast cancer research, prostate cancer research, um, epilepsy, Alzheimer's. Um, there's doTERRA, for instance, is one of the few companies who is working closely with a variety of hospitals and research institutions and in trying to further the advancement of this knowledge. This is really, um, a really great and unique thing that we're doing here. Um, so we're going to real quick talk about the variety of ways that you can use essential oils. Aromatic diffusion is, is the most common one. Um, this is where you're going to be using a diffuser, most typically. Um, but there's other ways that you can do that. Um, you can put a drop on tissue, you can make a spray, spray it in the air, spray it on a surface, spray it on your body. You can just open it and smell from the body. Certain oils, you can just put a drop in your hand, rub it, and cup it over your face and smell it. Um, it's great for... for very quickly and effectively changing your mood and emotion. It can open airways. It can actually cleanse the environment. There's been studies shown that diffusing certain oils um, on guard is our on guard blend is one. Um, uh, Melaleuca is another one you can defend. That, that has actually been shown to um, cleanse the air to the point of killing viral um, viral. Um, 
oh, what is the word I'm looking for? The killing viruses in the air. Um, uh, our purified blend will actually kill mold that's in the air. Um, it's, it's a very effective method, um, but not everybody wants to be smelling at the same time. It's great for, for home use and some work use, offices, that type of thing, um, with some of the oils, especially for the, the cleansing and relaxing ones. Uh, many hospitals are actually, Vanderbilt Hospital is, is, is diffusing oils and it's helping with um, overall uh, employee happiness there. Anyway, so this is one way of doing it. It gets into your bloodstream very quickly this way. Topical application is um, the, the next biggest one that we're going to be discussing uh, real quickly. Uh, this is where it's applied directly to the skin. Um, I encourage people to use carrier oil. Um, this does deliver a systemic effect, um, very localized, targeted healing. It's great for massage therapy, um, topical therapy. It provides almost immediate comfort. It helps support the immune system, as does the diffusing. Um, with the, just a real quick side note, um, when applying topically, there are some oils that are considered quote unquote hot that you do not want to use without heavy dilution. Um, oregano oil, cinnamon, cassia, um, those type of ones, they're going to have almost a burning sensation. That's why the word hot is associated with it. So you want to make sure that you know which oils are hot and which ones aren't, especially when you're dealing with people with sensitive skin, aka children. Um, with uh, carrier oils uh, or with topical application, it is recommended for people to use adults to use a 3 to 5 percent dilution. I go into this a little bit more in depth in the 101 class as well. But you want to use 3 to 5 percent dilution. Um, you can also just rub a base oil on um, on your skin, such as coconut oil, olive oil, veg any type of vegetable oil, really. Fractionated coconut oil is great because it doesn't go rancid. Um, put a base layer on your skin and then put a drop or two on top of that. If you're an adult, put a drop or two with, uh, on top of that. Let that rub in um, for 30 seconds and then apply the next one. Um, this is called layering technique and it, it, it is uh, really, uh, in my opinion, one of the most beneficial ways of applying topically. Um, the roller bottles are also great, especially for on the go. That's for making blends or just for having pre-diluted ones on hand. It's, it's great for pregnant women and for children and those types of things. And, um, ones that you don't want to have to mix every single time you use it. Um, internally, there's a little bit of controversy going on over the internal application. I encourage people to use common sense here. Um, not all of them are safe for internal use. Um, many of them are GRASS approved. The GRASS stands for general, generally regarded as safe. This is an FDA assignment given to, to a variety of things including essential oils stating that um, they're generally regarded as safe for internal consumption. Um, with this, you can place a few drops in a capsule. The only time I personally I really do this is if I am um, replacing the antibiotic. Um, I, we, we tend to replace antibiotics in our house with oregano oil and find it to be very effective. Um, I do not encourage that under the tongue and water with honey, although some people say that, um, but I do not encourage that. Um, I like to cook with them. Um, quite often actually, but a little bit goes a long way. Um, very often I don't even need an entire drop. I'll literally just stick a toothpick in it and stir it around. And, and like if I'm making a fruit dip or something like that, or hummus, um, it just doesn't really require a whole lot. A little bit goes a long way. And it's great for, um, for flavor enhancing purposes. Dietary supplement for tar targeted wellness. Um, I, I, if, if any of you are familiar with oil pooling, um, that's one way that I, I have found a huge array of benefits. Um, it's helped ease a lot of the um, the mouth issues I would started to have, sensitivity to gums, help whitening my teeth, those types of things. And I just um, essentially swish with a drop of um, whatever essential oil I'm, I'm, I'm choosing to use that day has been on guard lately um, with a teaspoon of coconut oil and I swish it for 20 minutes. Spit it out. Ready to go. It's good stuff. Um, some people like to gargle with it depending upon if you have um, particular issues, say strep throat or something like that for more targeted um, specific healing powers. Um, but I, again, I encourage you to, to use common sense with this. Do not be taking every oil every day in a capsule that is not necessary. It's a waste of oil in my opinion. 
Um, and again, some of them are just not safe. You want to look on the bottle. If it is grass approved, it will say it's grass approved on the bottle. Um, do be careful with that. Um, essential oil safety um, is very safe with very few side effects. Um, we've briefly talked about that. Um, again, use common sense. Keep it out of your eyes, ears, nose, any of the other orifices in your bodies. Um, if you happen to get it into your eyes or you ha happen to have a skin reaction, which is not does not happen very often, you want to dilute it, aka rinse it with oil, not with water. If you think about it from a scientific standpoint, or um, oil and water repel each other. So if you've got an oil on your skin and you put water on it, it's just going to make it spread or drive it deeper into your tissue. Um, if you need to rinse it, go, run to the kitchen or grab whatever carrier oil you have close by and put it on it, rub it a little bit, wipe it off, repeat that process until it has been diluted and rinsed off, the, off of your skin or your eye or wherever it is um, that was having the sensitivity issue. Um, skin sensitivity is the primary safety issue there that, that we are worried about. Um, as long as you are following particular guidelines um, with all of that. The only ones, um, things that you, you, you should be aware of, um, and again, that, that kind of goes into that more in my one-on-one class, um, children need heavier dilution, pregnant women need heavier dilution. If you are on certain medications, um, you should be aware of blood pressure being one of them. There are certain oils that can um, be very effective in reducing blood pressure. And, um, and if you're on a blood pressure medication or similar um, blood sugar, those types of things, then um, it, it, the, the essential oils are so powerful that they can act very similarly to the medication. So by all means, you don't want to be doubling up on your medication. If you decide to use these um, to help um, combat some of the symptoms of whatever it is that you are using it for, um, if it's something that requires a medication, I encourage you to let your doctor know that you are doing it um, so that what, that way medication can be adjusted according to what your body is going through because again these are very powerful medicines. It's not something to be scared of by any means but it is something that you need to watch um, and have it adjusted accordingly and properly. So why choose doTERRA essential oils? Um, let me tell you real quick about that. The essential oil production there we go. <laughs> Essential oil production line. Um, you've got three different or four different types of essential oils going on here. You've got your synthetic ones that are more for the perfume industrial industry. You've got your therapeutic grade ones which have a great array of health benefits to them. Um, you have your food ones which are grass stand, um, they're grass approved, grass standard. Um, those are going to be in, in um, chewing gums and stuff like that. Um, and then you've got your certified pure therapeutic grade oils. The blue here, the blue here in the diagram shows the synthetic. The green is for the food safe ones. The purple is for the therapeutic value. And that itty bitty little dot in there, yeah, that's us. That's the pure uh, certified pure therapeutic grade. Um, there is currently no um, uh, oil police, I guess you could say. So DoTerra has. Um, created a new standard that we are holding ourselves to and, and, and trying to encourage others to hold themselves to as well um, that guarantees the safety, effectiveness, and purity of the oils that, that are you, you are using in on your body and your family. Um, this is um, please excuse me for saying um so much. <laughs> uh, baby brain going on here. Um, we go through multiple types of testing. There's actually seven different types of purity testing that doTERRA um, submits their oils to. We work in very close contact with all of our growers, um, distillers, uh, and pack, uh, we, we work very close with everybody to make sure it's grown with, at beyond organic standards. We work with the communities um, to help educate them and um, we offer a guarantee on the quality of what we're doing here. Um, you can feel very safe and confident in using doTERRA oils. Um, the certified pure therapeutic grade, like I said, every batch goes through seven different types of tests. Um, this is to ensure that there is absolutely nothing artificial, no fragrances, no fillers, no pesticides, no other chemical residues. Um, all of these testings go through to make sure that 
not only are these things left out of it, but the things that are in it are the standardized active compounds that are to a therapeutic level. All of this is tested to ensure that you are getting um, proper quote unquote um, medicine, I guess you could say, if you want to call it that. Um, so real quick, we're going to go through the, um, the family physician essential oil collection. All of the oils that we're going to be discussing here um, are available in one little kit. And if you are interested in purchasing this kit, it is a great way to get set up in your home. Um, and you can contact me to do that, and I'll be glad to step you through or answer any questions that you have. I also have a sheet um, I'd love to send to you. It's 150 uses for our family physician kit. It's got a, a huge array of ways that you can take this one little kit and integrate it into your house and make your home and your family a lot healthier and safer. Um, the kit contains six essential oils and four essential oil blends um, that no family, including mine, should ever be without. So lavender, like I said, this is one of my favorite oils. This is really considered the, um, I guess you could call it the Swiss Army knife of of the essential oil world. It is used for so many different things. We call it all things calming. You can diffuse it into a room. Um, or apply it topically to calm anxiety and soothe emotions. This is an oil that is safe for children as well. Um, you can apply it topically to soothe irritated skin, lips, um, if you have uh, bug bites, stings, anything like that. It, it really does um, provide almost instant relief. You can massage it onto the back, the bottoms of the feet, and apply a drop or two at a pillow at bedtime. Um, it's got pain relieving properties, antibiotic properties, antidepressant, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, diuretic, sedative, and the list goes on and on and on with that. Um, lavender, melaleuca, and frankincense are three of my favorites. And three, I don't. Uh, those of you who know me know that I had um, a few months ago. I had about put a butcher knife accidentally through my hand, almost all the way through my hand, opening the package. I went three quarters of the way through my hand, um, almost out the other side. Um, after the initial emergency room visit where I got my stitches, I did not use any other types of medication. I did not fill the um, antibiotics that they gave to me, I did not use antibiotic ointment on it, I did not use peroxide, I did not use any of that stuff that was recommended to me. I treated it with lavender, melaleuca, and frankincense. And I went back three weeks later and not only had it completely healed, but I didn't have any nerve damage either, which was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so that's my, my one of my little personal testimonies with lavender there. Here's another one for you. This um, picture right here was on one of our mission trips um, and this little boy here, this poor little boy, my heart just breaks for him just looking at the picture, but he stepped in acid, um, a puddle of acid, why this was on the ground, I don't know, um, but stepped on in a puddle of acid thinking it was a puddle of water and as a result his foot got very badly burned. Um, this is what his foot looked like, the bottom right hand picture. Um, in the top left, you can see the right, right and left feet there. So this is day one of this happening. This is 15 days later, and this was treated with nothing but lavender oil. Um, so as you can see, it's great for burns um, and uh, just a, a huge host of other things um, in, in an area where you don't have access to um, proper medical care like they don't in Honduras where this picture was taken. Um, it's, it's absolutely critical for them to be able to have natural remedies available um, they can do themselves that are safe and effective. And you can do this at home too. Um, here's another one for, for you. This lady was um, had a pot of boiling water fall on her leg. This was a third degree burn. If you've ever had a first, second, or third degree burn, you know it is no fun. As you can tell from this picture, that looks incredibly painful. Um, this is five days later after applying lavender and melaleuca. Um, it just, the, the pictures really speak for themselves on how effective this stuff is. Um, lemon is another one that, that no house should be without. Um, this is really great if you are sick. It's great for cleaning. I use it in so many of my cleaning supplies um, and that and melaleuca as well. Um, with lemon, you can add a drop to honey to soothe the sore or dry throat. Um, you can diffuse it in a room to neutralize odors and helps elevate the mood. Um, orange and lemon in common, uh, launch orange or lemon in combination with peppermint is really a, a great blend to help you focus. Um, I diffuse that and apply it topically to myself when I need it. Um, I use it to clean kitchen counters and stainless steel applications. Um, I, I used it to get um, um, fly paper off of my wall 
uh, that had been stuck there for a year and it just, just at the last minute after I had already bought the goof off, goofy me, um, I decided to use a little bit of lemon essential oil to see if it would take it off and I took it right off when nothing else would. Um, it's a great insect repellent. Some people like to take it internally with water as an uh, antioxidant and detoxifier. Um, again, I encourage you to use your senses there. Don't don't do it too much, but it is one of the ones that is safe. I also love it in my fruit dips. Um, use lemon and uh, lemon and lime and all, all of the, all of the citrus ones are really just super yummy. Um, peppermint. Um, is it's great for cooling and invigorating. This was one of the ones that helped me get off of pain medication with my back. Um, peppermint is great topically for helping to soothe any kind of muscle aches, um, muscle joint aches. Um, it's great for headaches. You can apply, especially when com combined with lavender. Um, you can apply it to the neck, the forehead. Helps on headaches and migraines. Um, I, I will add it to a spray bottle in mist. It's one of my summer cooling time sprays. Um, there's just so many different things you can do with this. Um, if you're nauseous, uh, we, we will just smell it sometimes. One drop of peppermint essential oil is the equivalent of about, I think it was 28 cups of um, of peppermint tea. So if you have a really bad tummy ache or something like that or having some nausea, um, just putting a, a, a drop in some water with a little bit of honey and it can really go a long way at soothing that or even just doing the, you know, if a drop is even too much, you can just do a, um, a toothpick stuck in it and swirl it around in some water. A lot of people find that to be very effective. Um, I still use this on my back when, when I'm going into muscle spasms, when I'm having bad back bad back aches or sciatica issues. Um, I'll apply it, uh, I'll put a base oil down, I'll put our deep blue rub on and let that soak in for a second followed by a drop or two of the peppermint. It really helps knock it up a notch. If, if I need even more relief, I'll put a cold compress on that. That cold compress helps to drive the oils into the skin and help provide more of a cooling sensation. Um, peppermint, I'll dilute that and apply it on my legs when I have um, restless leg syndrome going on. Um, really seems to help with that. I've had friends tell me that the peppermint has helped with, um, um, with poison ivy and poison oak. Um, to help even relieve the itching and the irritation associated with that. Um, this is another one of those oils that is just really multifaceted. Uh, it's got great pain relieving properties to it. It's anti-inflammatory, anti-parasitic, antiseptic, anti-spasmatic, and estrogen, um, a variety of things associated with it. Um, Melaleuca, this is another one of my favorites. Um, this is a first aid for the skin and a great cleaner for the home. Um, how you can apply to skin, apply to the skin um, to help with blemishes. If you are a sufferer of adult acne like I am, um, you can actually apply a little drop. Um, I'll, I'll apply just a very small amount um, without a carrier oil, play a quote unquote neat, um, very small amount, just directly to where it is coming up. Um, and uh, usually the next day it's gone. Uh, it's great for rashes as a part of a daily cleansing program. I put melaleuca and lavender both into my um, into my facial scrubs that I make. That's the, another one for another day as well. It's great for shampoo. Um, helps encourage a healthy scalp, hair, dan uh, good for dandruff. Um, you apply it to feet and toenails after showering, swimming, and working out to help. Um, prevent fungus and those types of things. It's great for disinfecting. Um, it's actually been shown to kill, kill the flu virus, um, all forms of the flu virus. I'd be glad to send you studies on that if you're curious. Um, it's got great um, anti um, um, pain relieving properties to it. Again, this is one of the ones that I was using on my hand when um, when I about stuck the, the, the knife through it. And I, and I was using this directly on the wound as well. Um, so it does not burn. It's a very, very gentle one. This is another one that's safe for children as well. Um, great for diaper rashes, um, fungal infections, those types of things. Um, oregano oil. This is an amazing oil. Um, but this is a, a hot oil. So this is one of the ones I was talking about. Absolutely needs to be diluted. It needs to not only be diluted, it needs to be diluted relatively heavily. <laughs> Um, this is uh, also one of the few that, that I will do in a capsule um, for 
periodic immune support. I don't do it while I'm pregnant, but um, as part of my, my regular routine, um, I'll do it occasionally. And if I am getting some kind of infection, if my husband is getting some kind of infection, then we will take this for um, a antibiotic, and it's very effective in that. Um, if we're starting to get sick, I'll use this um, in on guard, um, dilute it and apply it to the bottom of our feet. Um, I will dilute it and apply it to the bottom of my son's feet. Again, heavy dilution is required there, but it's great for natural defense in the body. Um, Anti-inflammatory, it's got all the anti properties to it that the rest of them do. This is also another one that's good for cleaning um, because it is such a strong one. Um, <clears throat> if you're diffusing it, don't make it too heavy and diffusing in the air. It's great for diffusing, um, but you don't want to stand directly in front of it again because it is a hot oil just in case. Um, frankincense. Oh, I love frankincense. Okay, we get our frankincense from Oman. We're one of two companies who do that. Um, and frankincense is one of the ones that is being researched very heavily for its um, uh, its ability to be able to cross the blood brain barrier. It's being uh, it's being researched for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. It's also being um, very heavily researched uh, for anti tumor and anti cancer properties. It's being shown certain types are being shown to be very effective in helping to reduce tumor size and breast cancer, prostate cancer, and a variety of other. Um, a tumor and uh, cancer causing or cancer types. Um, frankincense, lavender, and peppermint is great a combination to help calm stress and headaches. Frankincense, adding a drop or two of frankincense to whatever oil you are using really does boost it up quite a bit. Um, it is outside of it having an amazing smell to it. Um, it's it's great for so many oil. I mean, great for so many purposes. I, it's fabulous on the skin. I use it in a lot of my, my facial oils, um, body oils, and whatnot. Apply it to the feet. You can. Um, this is one you can. They say that you can use internally. I have never tried using it internally. Help um, support immune function. Again, you don't really need to be doing anything internally because you get most of the benefits from aromatic and topical uh, applications, which are the primary ones that you want to be utilizing. Um, it's, it's just great for so many different things. And when in doubt, uh, you know, you can, when in doubt, the two that we turn to, frankincense and lavender. The, the, those are our two um, Swiss armies right there um, wh when it comes to just being benign and being um, just very gentle and effective in so many different areas. Um, deep blue, this is the, the other one I was telling you about that helped get me off of the medication from my back. Um, this comes in a few different forms that we offer. Uh, it can come in the concentrated form like you see right here. You get a five milliliter of it with the um, family physician kit that we're discussing. Um, the deep blue, this concentrated form right here, I would apply a base um, oil, usually coconut oil is it, just because I love coconut oil so much and all the different values associated with it. I apply a base of coconut oil um, to my lower back, followed by a few drops, two to three drops of the deep blue. I'd rub that in, wait a minute, and apply it with two to three drops of the peppermint essential oil. Rub that in, followed by a cold, cold compress, and it's absolutely amazing. We also offer a deep blue rub, which is already concentrated um, enough, but diluted enough to be able to use directly on the skin. Um, and it comes in a rub form, so it's easy to apply. It comes in a little tube, and you just squeeze it on out. Um, and you can also get, um, also make rollers for it, which is really great for on-the-go application. Um, and we will discuss uh, rollers a little bit more in depth in different ones, and I'll show you how to make those. Um, but this is absolutely amazing oil for helping to relieve muscle spasms, muscle aches, um, before and after exercise, um, you know, the achy joints. It, it's just really 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 great blend here. Um, it contains wintergreen, camphor, peppermint, blue tansy, German chamomile, helichrysum, and osmanthus. Um, yeah, thumbs up on the deep blue. Alright, breathe. This is one that I, it seems like every other week I have a friend or family member or somebody I have shared the oils with come back to me and say, you would not believe what this oil has done for me and my family. Um, the most common thing that I hear coming back to me from this 
is for seasonal allergies um, as far as clearing congestion and whatnot. And in asthma, I have heard so many people come to me um, and just ranting and raving and just super excited that they had not had to use um, their inhaler or their child's inhaler in a month or two just from diffusing this or putting it on their on their chest or on their feet before they go to bed. Um, it's 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 not something that we battle with in our house. So it's not something I've been able to personally see, but I've had so many people um, that I love and trust come back to me saying that, that this um, has really just made a huge impact in their life where they were using um, the steroid inhalers and make, make them all jittery and give them headaches and those types of things but it would allow them to breathe but they'd have all of these side effects afterwards um, whereas they you know these moms now they just carry breathe in their pocket and um, if their child starts having a asthma attack then they will um, allow them to smell it and then apply it to them and um, most of the time if not all the reports that have come back to me have been very positive and very beneficial with this oil it's got laurel leaf peppermint eucalyptus melaleuca lemon and ravensura um, it's again it's a, it's a great help for natural recovery for flu and cold type symptoms you can uh, apply it diluted topically to the chest and neck to help clear lungs and sinuses um, those of you who have ever used um, um, what is that eucalyptus rub? Oh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, used, yeah, I'm sure y'all know what I'm talking about. That eucalyptus rub, the rub all over, uh, vapor rub. There you go. Um, for those of you that, that are familiar with vapor rub, it has um, a much more beneficial effect to it, minus the chemicals. And uh, there have actually been reports of vapor rub um, being used on children and having some very dire consequences because of some of the stuff that's in it and the uh, improper dilution of it um, to it being too strong. This is this is safe. This is effective. Um, it's great for RSV, emphysema, asthma, bronchitis, uh, any kind of respiratory stressful issues. Um, you can apply it to the bottom of the, bottom of the feet as well. Um, when applying on babies, you definitely want to dilute it or children. Um, even on adults, I encourage people to dilute on, on adults properly. Um, and you can diffuse it directly into the air if the whole family is having any issues or in a bedroom when going to bed at night. Um, it's really some amazing oil here. Digestin is a great one as well. It really helps provide a lot of digestive support. It's got, uh, you can just look at what's in it and just tell it's really good stuff. This is a kind of a yummy one to cook with too. <laughs> um, it's got ginger, peppermint, tarragon, fennel, coriander, coriander and anise. Um, if you're not familiar with all of those flavors, you ought to try it and give it a whirl. Um, it's pretty yummy. Not everybody likes it, but you don't have to do it internally by any means. Um, and again, I don't encourage people to do internal for the most part. It's just not necessary, but it is a yummy one, especially with making salad dressings and stuff like that. Um, as a digestive aid, you can actually you just rub it on your stomach. Um, and to help ease digestive issues, discomfort, nausea, motion, motion sickness, you can just smell the bottle and it'll help relieve uh, tummy issues. Um, for regular digestion support, some people decide to take it internally at meal times. Um, I have some close friends who do this on a pretty regular basis and report great success with it. Um, for children, you can apply this to the bottoms of the feet to help ease digestive issues. Um, if you apply it to the tummy, again, you need to have it diluted, especially for babies, or especially for children. Um, best uses for it, stomach aches, morning sickness, diarrhea. The morning sickness, I also find that citrus is amazing for that, just for the record. Uh, anybody wondering about pregos out there like me? Morning sickness, orange, yes. All right, diarrhea, constipation, diaper rash, those types of things, nausea, motion sickness, indigestion, heartburn, um, are all supposed to be great. Um, relief with the digestion. On guard, this is one of my favorites and I absolutely love it. I love it, love it, love it. Everybody who smells it loves it. Um, this is um, our version of the Thieves Blend for those of you who are familiar with it. Um, it does help boost your immune system naturally. It helps create a natural defense in your body. It eliminates airborne pathogens. If you just diffuse it in a room when uh, during the flu season, it will really help protect your family and your home from those funky viruses that are going around. Um, it's a great cleaning aid. Um, um, you can dilute it in a spray bottle um, to clean doorknobs, telephones. Um, I keep a little bit in a spray bottle for when I'm going out and about. I just give a quick spritz onto uh, shopping carts and stuff like that, especially when I'm putting my child in the carts. 
Um, help protect your mouth. This is one of the ones I was talking about that I did the oil pooling with. Um, help boost the immune system and pull help pull a lot of the toxins out of your body. Um, best uses for it, enhance the immune system, fight bacteria and mold, kill surface germs. It smells amazing with the wild orange, clove, cinnamon, eucalyptus, and rosemary. During the holiday season, I'll make a lot of body care products that make great gifts because it smells like the holidays as well. Um, if you would like samples of any of these oils, feel free to let me know. Um, I'd be glad to pop those in the mail to you along with any other additional information. Um, Back to the on guard real quick. Um, with the super immunity, you know that um, anti um, antibacterial um, with bleh, brain fart, antibiotics. We are having a um, a surge in resistance to antibiotics in our bodies, in our world um, that we live in. Uh, by boosting your body's natural immune system and using things like essential oils um, that do not build a tolerance to antibiotics, um, you're really helping to benefit and keep this out of our waterways, helping to keep it out of your body, helping to prevent these super flus and super viruses and super bugs from um, from growing and, and continuing to wreak havoc on us. Um, PubMed has a huge array of documents available for you to read. Um, these are published medical documents. To, a lot of them is just the abstracts that are available to us without being a medical professional, but the abstracts give you a really good idea of what the study was about and whether it was effective or not. Um, you know, utilize that. There's a lot of other really great resources that you can do. Um, if you choose to make the choice to try to eliminate some of the doctor bills, um, we are not trying to eliminate family, our physicians by any means. They definitely have a place. Hospitals have their place. Doctors have their place. Modern medicine really has its place in our lives. But it is something that is being overabused, overused, and not offering enough um, solutions to the problems that are being created with it. Um, a lot of these uh, the everyday ailments we can take care of take care of at home. Um, if you choose to want to empower yourself to take care of your family, provide care for appropriate that is appropriate for each family member. Essential oils um, can be used on pretty much every member of the family, from the family dog to the baby to great grandma, uh, and everybody in between. They 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 really can be applied towards the entire family. Used in um, outside of the medicine chest, uh, body care products, um, personal products, baby products, cleaning products, um, just a, a huge array. Um, you can boost your natural defense and in and, and, and mixing and using oils you really are creating these really precious tender bonding moments with your family um, that you're not going to have while you're, while you're trying to force a, force a spoonful of medicine down them um, or trying to get a five-year-old to take a pill. Oh my gosh! Um, Anyway, good luck with that. <laughs> um, the Family Physician Kit, it starts out at 166 retail, but we do offer it for 150 wholesale. Um, it does include an audio CD. Anybody who decides to purchase um, through me, I am 100% available to you to be able to answer any questions and help guide and educate you along the way. Um, this is not an exact science, but we are um, learning some really amazing and beautiful things together and helping people along the way. All of the oils that we just discussed do come in this kit. Um, if you buy wholesale, you do save a lot more and um, you get 25% off of retail and have a huge of other um, uh, options available to you to be able to save and even make money as well. Um, here's some of the kit options that we we offer the top left one is the family physician one. You have your natural solution ones and your family wellness kit. Um, you have a variety of ones to, and there's a lot more than these to be able to start with. They do start out at 150 though, and it's a great way to get the oils set up in your house at a discount and learn how to use them. Um, wholesale membership, wellness advocate. Um, like I said, you get 25% off of retail prices. You get between 10 to 30 percent, depending upon how long you're with the program, a free auto ship reward credit. I'd be glad to explain this a little bit more to you, but it's essentially um, product points that are coming back to you for um, for your rewarding for purchasing, essentially. Um, all if you are a wholesale member and have our LRP program set up, it's our loyalty reward program. 
um, you get 100% back of your shipping rewards as well. So everything that you, you sp every dollar that you spend on shipping will come back to you as well. Eligible to receive a free product every month. Um, you can sponsor other product consultants if you decide to share with anybody. Um, you don't even have to do a full business with it, but these things just naturally lend themselves to sharing. Then you can actually get commissions off of it and help pay for your oils. Um, first month I did it, actually my oils paid for themselves. I was super excited. Special promotions, a living magazine, and the $35 enrollment fee is waived when you purchase a wholesale membership with a kit. Um, so it's really a great deal. Um, if you're interested in learning more, please email me. Here's my email address. Go ahead and jot it down. StashaWarren at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook at Stasha Warren. I have a Facebook group along with a good friend of mine called Essential Wellness. We'd love to have you on there. Uh, it's a great place to be able to share and learn. Um, I have recently started blogging again. I will have this video along with others available on my blog at elianasgardens.wordpress.com. Um, you, if you want to learn more, again, I said you know, research with PubMed, other verifiable places online. I encourage you not to look at every blog on the internet. You can look at ideas, but a lot of these people, you don't know if they've done their research or not. Um, so you want to make sure that you, you're educating yourself properly. EverythingEssential.me is another great place where you can um, find some good verifiable information. Um, so that pretty much concludes our classes t today. Um, check back with me next week. Uh, hopefully I'll have another one available for you. And feel free to contact me. Any questions that you have, I would love to answer them, share with you. If you'd like to try any of the oils, um, let me know what it is that you're looking for and I will be glad